Where you find that at? It's right here. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually I'm gonna take this one home. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> Welcome back to the Richard Sherman Podcast this week. I got an incredible guest, Tala Noah Hufanga. What up, brother? Not much, not much. How you doing? I'm blessed, brother. I'm blessed, man. You got you on here. Team <laughs> balling. What y'all didn't want? Five straight? Something like gotta that. Feel, gotta Something feel like good. <laughs> man, we just we just going out there and having fun. I know everybody kind of sees it. and you know, It's a great locker room, bunch of great dudes. And we just go out there and just put all the pieces together. And, you know, we fly around with a lot of energy and it's just been fun. That's how it's supposed to be. That's how it's supposed to be. And there's a standard to the defense. And I know Fred and Eric and Dre and Jimmy, you know, holding everybody to that. And E-Man, you know, oh, man, I hated that happened to E-Man, man. man. How were y'all able to overcome all the injuries all season? Honestly, it's, it's, you know, we had a little bumps in the road. You know, we've had, you know, two quarterbacks go down. We've had two corners go down uh, that are big time, you know, and crucial to, you know, what our organization is about, you know, guys that, you know, hold the standard and continue to set it each and every day. So uh, defensively, you know, it was two great dudes. And it goes beyond football, you know, because right. these are guys that you spend your time with. You know what it's like being in these meetings. You, you spend all your time with them every single day and you get to see their perspective on life and, and, and different things. So um, seeing those things happen is, is, is never fun. It's never pleasant. You know, but for guys like them, it, it actually, you know, it, it builds their character and the adversity that they get to go through. And, you know, the guys have always had injuries, but when they come back, you know, they're even a stronger person mentally. So speaking of injuries, man, they got my boy Jimmy G, too. Oh, that had to be tough on game <laughs> yeah. day, man. But but Purdy went in there and played the game. But how how was it, you know, when y'all went in there and talked to him? Uh it was tough, you know, and, you know, I think after the after the game, you know, Bosa talked and, you know, it was it was a special moment, you know, for him just to, you know, kind of let it all out, you know, and, you know, how he felt and, and what it means to him to to lose a guy or lose a friend, you know, that, that's able to play on the field. So, you know, there's upside to it and, and you know, Purdy coming in and, and, and being able to do what he did. And, and as, as a young guy, you know, rookie, you know, his, his locker is only two away from mine. So, you know, I see him every day studying, right. preparing. So. You know, it's a blessing for him just to be able to go in there and showcase what he can do. Uh, but a guy like Jimmy G, you know, it's very, you know, we send our prayers out to him just to have a successful surgery and all those things like that. So, right, right. I hope he bounces back stronger than ever, man. He's at a unfortunate road, you know, and, and, and just weathers a storm and been a consummate pro. Um, but it's your Pro Bowl year. We got to get you to the Pro Bowl this year. So faithful, <laughs> y'all got to get out and vote in waves. You know, the coaches and the players, they're going to do their thing. But y'all got to make sure this man get get what he deserves because he out there balling. Four picks, five tackles for a loss, the only player this year. And they said you grew up on a farm in Oregon and went to SC. You going to have to explain that to me. Yeah, so uh, grew up in Oregon, small town, uh, Albany, right next to Corvallis. So I kind of claim I'm from Corvallis because that's where I went to school. Uh, right. But really, it was weird because, I, you know, I had offers to go a lot of different places in the country, you know, whether it was Alabama, Michigan, but, or even staying home at Oregon State in Oregon. I wanted to leave, though. It was something that was, you know, in my heart just to get away and do something different. And growing up in Oregon, you know, you get a lot of rain. Right. And uh, it's not. And I know you played in Seattle, too. So, you know what the rain is like. It just yeah. rains constantly in the Pacific Northwest. So I was like, why not go somewhere warm where I'd enjoy life outside of football? Right. Um, and so I made my way down to USC, but it was very different because when I lived on my farm, like I had open fields everywhere. Like my backyard was two acres of just like grass, like, and it right. was cows. That's where my cows roamed and everything. So it was weird. And then you go to, you go to USC and the biggest open area is the football field. Right. And concrete jungle, baby. A concrete jungle. So it was, it was very different. It was eye opening. And I think that's what I loved it. You know, it was something that was very different and it kind of made me appreciate what a city life is because I never had that growing up. So right. um, it was pretty cool. and it was, it was unique for sure. No question. No question. And people think uh, USC is in a good area. SC is in, a, <laughs> in the slums, baby. Oh, <laughs> Don't no, let I've, it fool you. I've, I've had some encounters for sure. So uh, it's definitely different than uh, just going to, you know, walking your goat, walking your cow around just <laughs> for fun. And then you're going over there and you just got to dodge the bullets, you know. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Literally. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, I mean, when did you connect with Troy? You know, obviously the path is similar um, and, and, you know, obviously you come to, to the Niners, but, you know, you can see the similarities on the field. You can see 
it, and your triggers and your and it's different than how you were playing last year. You know, I thought last year you played well, you played solid, but you weren't as instinctive as you are this year. This year you see it, you believe it, and you gun it every single time. Like what changed? Uh, you know, and I'll answer the first part first. You know, I was very fortunate. Um, my senior year of high school, I met I was at the Polynesian Bowl in Hawaii. Uh, I met a guy by the name of Vi Sikahema. He was like one of the first ever Tongans to play in the NFL. Mm -hmm. uh, good return guy, good specialist, uh, running back. He actually, we sat down and we talked. We're like, man, who who do you really inspire to be like? And I was like, man, I've been watching Troy my whole life. Like, you know, and I, I didn't. I had the short hair at the time. Don't get it confused. I had the short hair, <laughs> uh, but I was like, man, this is a guy that I really respected. You know, his game, and you know, he's a very humble Polynesian dude. So I was like, man, it'd be cool to you know just kind of emulate his game. So next thing you know, he's like, I actually know him. Let me put you in contact with him. And I'm like, as a senior in high school, you know, for me, it was like, it was raps. Like, you give me his number. Right. I'm not ever losing this. I'm number. not losing it. Right. <laughs> and so I end up getting on, I get on the phone with him. And, you know, as a young kid, I'm, I'm still 17, by the way. So I'm like, I'm asking him, what can I do to be a better safety? And this guy completely avoids the question. He's like, we got to work on your character first. And he doesn't even know me. Like, I'm, I'm committed to USC. I want to go to USC because that was my dream school. But he's telling me, he's like, man, there's no need for to work on safety. We need to work on your character first. And so I, we sit down and we come up with a list of things to do. And I'm just like, dang, I, I just want to play football. But <laughs> right, in, order, right. in order to do these things, that's how we can, you know, we're going to elevate your game. And so, you know, one of those things was we got to delete social media for all of college. And, and, I, and I looked at him like, dude, you're telling me as a, as a safety, as a, as a freshman, as a guy that's going to USC, a big branding market, I got to get rid of my social media. And he's like, yeah, if you want to be all in, we got to do this. So I was like, all right, say less. And so I ended up getting off of social media for three years because I only went to college for three years. So all three years, I never downloaded no app, never was on no app, no nothing. And I'm what? like, I'm like, this dude has me tripping. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, listen to a guy that did it at the highest level and, and was a Hall of Famer. I was like, I got to listen to him, you know, and, and he's 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 done so many things in this game to change this game. But is also a great person. It would be stupid of me not to listen. So right. I followed some of the advice. There was other things that he had said, you know, and I kept doing them. And what was kind of cool about it is I don't think he actually knew that I did it. You know, he kind of told me this as, a, you know, this is like I'm a young kid. And I kept the relationship all the way through college. You know, I was able to see his house, go to his house, visit with his family and, and really create a close bond. But it wasn't until I finished my third year and I was decided to declare. I told him I was like, yeah, I did all those things you had told me. <laughs> what did he say? I, I still remember he was on the phone with it and, and I'm on the phone with him like because I'm I'm trying to ask him, can you train me for the for the draft, but not really for the combine? I was like, can you train me just to get ready for the NFL? Right. And I think when I told him, I was like, yeah, I, I listened to everything you said. You know, his wife was there and he's like, I think he, I think he did everything I told him to do. <laughs> and she's like, no way. And then he like gets back and he's like, Yeah, I'll train you. So I was like, all right, bet, like this is cool. And so you know, he kind of had to at that point. He kind of had to. Yeah, he. I think he was just like, you know, very shocked. But it was like, you know, for me, I, I respected him, you know, and I still do to this day. Like anything he says, like I, I really take it to heart. And, you know, and, and I, I truly want to be the best version of myself, you know, on, on the field. And so I went through my rookie year. And I, and as you said, like, you know, there was little bits and pieces. It was rough, you know, and everybody said, oh, you should have played. No, I was like, I played just enough where I got to learn. I got to grow. I got to sit behind good veteran guys that really helped me see the game. And honestly, it was just, you know, a long year for me to just like try to get in tune to what this NFL life was. And so this year, you know, we had a great off season with Troy, um, but it really kind of propelled this, you know, this time for me to be able to trigger on the field, be able to see things different, prepare different uh, and go out there and knew what to expect when I, when I hit the field. And so, uh, a lot of this year is having a lot of great guys around me and great coaches. So I know there's a long answer to your question, mm. uh, but uh, it, it's, it's been a, a blessing in my life for sure. That, that People don't understand what great defense is and what great veterans can do for you. You know, great veterans can can lead you, teach you. Bad veterans can do the same thing. You know, there are teams you get on the team. Veterans don't say nothing to you. They don't tell you how to prepare. They don't help you in practice. They don't encourage you. They don't support you. And then you just, you know, people have different careers. That's why people are, are like, man, you get to different teams and people have different experiences. But I'm so excited for you because, I mean, the play you made, I think it was on a screen pass, the screen pass that you tipped up and, and caught in pick six. Uh, <laughs> like the the balls you got to have to take your <laughs> shot right there 
are crazy because it could easily be screen and go. And you didn't hezzy. You read your keys. You trusted what you saw and you went. And bro, when I saw that, I said, okay, now, all right, <laughs> like, there's no, there's no film. There's no training. There's, there's nothing. You can't teach that kind of trigger, that kind of trust, that kind of, and sometimes, sometimes you're going to lose something. This week you had Tyreek. It got a little play. Like, all right, put it in a notebook. Like, you know what I mean? Chalk it up. Yep. Dust yourself off. <laughs> hey, it ain't going to happen again. You know what I mean? And that's mm-hmm. what's cool about the game. And it's cool to see that evolution. I mean, only in your second year and you, you've taken freaking a, a huge leap. But explain that Tyreek play to me. What you see? Um, uh, you know, honestly, we're, you know, we're playing different coverages. You know, you try to show everything, you, you know, how it is, you know, we, we playing quarters coverage, you're playing cover one, you're playing cover three, you try to disguise everything, almost try to be Let's the same. See. Right. And, uh, you know, we're playing quarters coverage. So, you know, obviously if there's over wrap, you know, you can take those, you can drop those. Everybody plays it completely different, you know? Right. So for me, that was, you know, kind of like a little bit of my responsibility, but in the back end rewatching it, you know, why would I not play deep to short? You know right. what I mean? And so that's something I get to learn from, um, you know, help my teammates out by, you know, being in the right spot at the right time and doing my job. And so that was my job. And I and I and I gave up a play. But honestly, I just got to continue to grow from it and learn from it. And sometimes you hey, take your lump now because you're going to see the play in the playoffs. I Yo, guarantee yeah. you, <laughs> yeah, you're going to get to the playoffs and they're going to they're going to they're going to. Put that care right in front of you and say, <laughs> hey, did he learn or did he not learn? And a quarterback might just say, hey, I don't think he learned and let it go. And that mm-hmm. might be a book. You know what I mean? Where you yep. be like, look, y'all thought I didn't learn. It's in the notebook, baby. No. Right there. <laughs> don't do it again. No doubt. You know, they always say stay out the cheese. And so I, I definitely took the cheese. I got to be lactose intolerant now. <laughs> and um, any, any way I can to get a stay off the cheese so I can stay back. Uh, definitely you'll learn from it for sure. Oh, man, you, I know you will. And the way your season's been going, man, I, I hope they give you your honor and I hope you don't play in it because I hope y'all get to the goddamn big game. Oh, big no game, doubt. baby. No doubt. It had, to, it had to feel good to taste that NFC championship, though. You know what I mean? And just feel the, the intensity of the playoffs and all that energy. I, and, you know, obviously I played in Oregon football. You know, I went to USC. I, I played a gr- – we had a great year, but it was Pac-12. It, we went to Pac-12 championship, but it was COVID, so we didn't have no fans. Right. So – you know, the years that we were bad, it, it was, you know, there wasn't that many people in the stands. Uh, but then going to Green Bay, going to Dallas, you know, going to the NFC Championship and Levi South is what I call it. Yeah. Uh, seeing how many people showed up and what playoff football was about. It was so electric. Like, you, it gets like, you get goosebumps and everything. Right. Like, it just, it was different. Like. And I was like, this is what games that you, I've seen the games that you played in. So I know, I know exactly like, I didn't know that's what, how electric those games were. And so like, I, it's weird to like, even think that I've even been in one of those games. That was the highest, like biggest game I've ever been in. And so like, looking back at it now, like you want to, we strive for those, those, those moments, you know, cause those are special, you know, and you'll remember those ones forever. So oh, don't worry. You're going to be your beyond <laughs> back in it this year. And, and, no and the cool thing about those games is it's not different. You know what I mean? It's really not that different. Like, once you get past the flash and the and the hoorah and the 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 oh NFC championship on the field, like once I smack somebody, like hey, what's your, oh, we boy. out here? Like <laughs> hey, 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 check, hey, get your checks, hey, you down, you down, you down, hey, check your motion, hey, read it, read it, read it, Linda, 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 like the calls, you you in the game, you in the mix, <laughs> like come on now, I didn't play in the scheme, baby. <laughs> Um, you, be done. you be watching, you be knowing everything that be going on. I don't got to. That's funny. Uh, got to. <laughs> Uh, but but it was cool. It, it's just really cool when you get to go into those moments with the with the soldiers that you've been riding with. That's the cool part is that yeah. you you playing in the, one of the best. I mean, I think y'all the best defense in football. And when Eric came back, I mean, just went to a whole nother level again. <laughs> he opens up so much doors, you know, and, and you can see it just with the pass rush and the ability for him to get close to getting home or getting other guys open to get home. You know, I think there was one where I think he, like. Dang near took three guys out. Three. Bosa, Bosa came scot free. You know what I mean. So, but that's what you know. Domingo Ryan's and you know, and I know you've been underneath that that tree of all these guys that have been here. You know, they preach that. You know, we want to be the number one defense, but we also want to we want to win. You know, every single game. And our coach talks about just taking that one step, going one and zero every snap. You know, and if you can do one and zero every snap over the course of a game, and and, and being being successful, it just adds up. You know, you can really win a lot of games like that. And we got to be the, the rock in any way possible. So 
it's funny because, you know, a lot of people don't see that, you know, the inside scoop of what it's like. We believe it every single day when we go into our meetings, you know, and, and that's the only way you can come out and, and be able to put stuff on film like that. So testament to those guys and, and watching those films and getting those cut ups and and really pushing us to be the best defense possible. So, you know, I got a lot of respect for our coaches for real. No question. Well, tell me about Kyle, because I, I love Kyle. That's my guy. Yeah. Uh, but he's he's an acquired taste for some. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because you don't you rarely run into a coach that keep it a buck like Kyle do. Oh, no doubt. He's a guy that's going to tell you the truth. He ain't he going to shoot you straight. He's going to make sure you are on top of everything, you know, regardless of your situation. If you are a undrafted free agent that came into the league and you weren't expected to play, you were expected to play at a first round talent level. You know what I mean? Like you have to play every snap like that. And I think that's why you see a lot of guys that were undrafted on our team play at such an exceptional level because they, that's the expectation and the standard is set when you show up on the field and in the meeting rooms. You know, if you're not taking notes, you're not learning. So, you know, guys are coming in and just doing those things. And our coach really holds us to level and that's what we expect of ourselves as well. So I'm very fortunate just to be in this organization on the great people like that. Uh, guys that are very honest. Guys, they'll make sure you are doing the right thing each day and day in and day out. They grateful to have you too. You know, I, <laughs> I, I mean, from your first day there, I had heard nothing but positive things with you know from Jimmy, from Tart, from E Man, and then you go out there on the field and you put it on tape. It's been cool to watch. But the the Nicholas John Bosa that you know, and the <laughs> Nicholas John Bosa that I know is through them because you're talking about Nick giving speeches after the game. I said, that's my boy. Look at him. They grown up because he didn't say six words. The whole year. No, yeah. <laughs> and, and it's funny because I think it really started last year because, you know, my first year last year, I'm like, man, this is the bear. Like, this is the guy. This is, you know, this is who I watched on on film, you know, and then you hear of his brother and everything. And they're just so alike, you know, and they're just quiet and they just show up with this. The next, you know, coach is making them talk at, before pregame speeches. And I'm just like, this dude actually says words like and then and then, it, <laughs> then it, it starts from six, like you said, then it works its way to twelve. You know, he hasn't passed 15 yet, but okay. he's okay. he's working his way there. But he's just he's an incredible dude for sure. Well, he's working his way past 15 sacks. On the, nah, nah. That's for sure. Boy, I'm, <laughs> I'm, the one, I'm on the defensive MVP hype train, baby. I'm the conductor. Oh. True, true. Oh, trust me, we all trying to get him like I know I've seen some stuff, you know, and, and everybody wants, you know, other guys. And like, man, Bosa can change the game just like just like that. So, right. You know. Anytime we can get him on the field and get him to get to the quarterback or get to the running back, let him do it. Like, this. bro, <laughs> I, my, my last year, I mean, the year we went to the Super Bowl, bro, I used to just be back there bailing because I know whether we rush four or we rush Mo, he going to get home he gonna or he's going to put he going to be in somebody's face and they're going to toss it up. And I need to see it. I need yeah. to see it come out. No, I heard I heard you. You were big on vision and I, and I see it because that makes sense now, like being in this defense, like if you just have eyes on a QB. It's going to get tipped. It's going to get pressure, and the ball not going to be on time to where it needs to be. So, no. uh, man, the ball just be flying over places uh, because, right. of, because of that bear, that big because bear. Of that bear. <laughs> because of that bear. Hey, that D-line be hunting. It be Eric, the bear. See, we had Defoe then, too. And Defoe was – imagine Eric, and then there's another Eric next to him, and they're playing that D-tackle. And then you got Bosa and D-Ford on the edge. It was just like, hey – you got two six sevens in your face, and then you got monsters on the edge. You got to put it up, baby. You got to put it up. <laughs> so, That's what true. about Christian? Christian, hey, CMC then came and, and made his presence felt. That's changed the offense, and another, you know, made it more dynamic. Trent's back. Like, man, y'all got to be feeling good. Yeah, I think honestly, for me, in my perspective, you know, I got to play against him, CMC, right before we, you know, we ended up trading and getting him. So it's kind of weird because, like. I took a bad angle and I was like, my, I think it was like, and, and everybody, you know, I missed tackles, but a lot of it is, you know, we, we shoot our guns, you know, and as, right. a, as, a, as our, our defense, especially you can shoot your guns because you know, right, somebody's you know running, somebody coming. you know, the more actually, the more times, believe it or not, when you, when you sit in the chair, they get more yards than right. just shooting your guns and somebody else hitting him right after he stops his feet. So I remember just sitting in the chair and, and, and trying to see CMC run and I'm like, that's a touchdown. He cut back on me. And I, and I remember seeing, so he, he gets traded. He comes here. And I'm like talking to him. Like the first thing I asked him in the locker room was, bro, like, why'd you cut back on me? Like, <laughs> like, tell me why. Like, what did I do to give you? Like, he's like, man, I just don't like playing against guys like that. Like that just shoot their guns. Like, and I'm just like, wow, that's the first time he saw me sit in the chair. So <laughs> runs right by me, uh, scores. But what was cool about him, what was really impressive is he came in on, a, I think, a Friday. And he turned around and played on a Sunday. Right. 
And, and you know, you know, Kyle's scheme, it, it's not, it's not simple. It's not easy. Guys that play in this scheme, I have so much respect for because it's, if you hear the huddle call, you would know like, how crazy this offense is and, and what they do. Right. And for him to come in in a game like that and, and just be able to play, because I remember seeing him, I think Saturday, the walk through, I was like, are you playing? He's like, yeah. And I was like, you just got here. And he's like, yeah, I'm ready to go. And so he prepares every week, you know, be ready to go. And, and that's why I have so much uh, respect for him. Uh, he's such a great player, but a great person as well. Yeah, he is. He's a cool dude. You know, Stanford guys, they, 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 they figure it out, you know, you know, whatever, you know, we used to be good at a point in time. You ain't got to see it, but, but we, we used to be all right. <laughs> Don't worry. We talked about that. Right, 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 right. He was, he was up for the Heisman, you know what I mean? Once upon a time, but <laughs> you got to tell me this because you, you go through college you're broke as a joke. Now these kids getting paid whole different, different Avenue. But when you got drafted, what you spend your first check on, like you, you had to spurge on some, don't tell me you just put it in the bank and, and I ain't spend no money. Well, first off, I'm a very frugal person. Okay. Uh, and I, I will tell you that, like, and I'm not like, I'm not lying about this. So it was funny. Cause you know, I'm, I'm from, I'm from a farm and like I grew up on the lake, I grew up on the water, I grew up in the mountains snowboarding. And so I'm in I'm in uh, L.A. at the time before right before I get drafted, actually. And mm-hmm. I knew I'm about to get. So this I, this is pre spending draft money. And I'm mm-hmm. like, I'm going to get drafted. I'm, I'm going to do this real quick. So I'm driving in South Central in the hood and I see this like tire. What are you sh- doing? It's where I live. It's where I lived. You know, I'm used to it at this point, you know, <laughs> right, so like, right, right. I'm, I'm driving and I see this tire shop. uh and I'm like, man, is that a broken jet ski? And I've always wanted a jet ski my whole life. And so I went, in, I went into this tire shop. And it was just like this, like rundown place. And I asked, it was broken, like bad. And I was just like, I want this jet ski. And he's like, why would you want to buy something that's broken? I was like, because my best friend's a mechanic and he's gonna fix it for free. And so <laughs> I ended up, I ended up buying a broken jet ski for for four hundred bucks. Uh, put a hundred dollar battery in it, and it, it brand new. And it worked just as good. And so uh, my first purchase was a broken jet ski, I think. So it's, it's random. Trust me, like random. But that was I'm a, I'm a country dude. Like, that's just what I wanted to get. And that's what I want to do. I didn't go buy no Gucci, no nothing. Like, it was just I'm ready to go rock with this uh, this broken jet ski. <laughs> Have you got the rider yet? Oh, yeah. No, we took it out. Like, it was my best friend, he fixed it, like, that day when I showed up. Like, I drove it all the way back from L.A. to Oregon. He fixed it all up. And then right after I got drafted, like took it out on the water and everything. So it was pretty lit. I'm not even gonna lie. Like that was probably one of my favorite experiences of all time. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Best ball honey you ever spent. That's four hundred dollars I ever spent. And I was like, cause you know, all the new ones go for like, you know, 10 grand, right? 15 grand. So I thought I got a deal off of it. And I was like, man, I might as well just like flip it at this point. You know, it's working now. It looks good. And I'm not saying you got it's gonna rid be- of it. No, no, I'm. I still have it. I'm just saying I could flip it, right. you know, make you my five hundred back. But no question, it, it was pretty cool to be able to see it on the water work. So <laughs> that is pretty cool. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna tell you my jet ski story. Just understand, I, I, it took me a while to get out the boat deck. You know, when you, you, you <laughs> the, the boat drop. When I tell you, we got into the water and the jet ski wasn't working, and we had already parked the car back, and people, oh. other people were. Co- oh my god, it was a disaster. It almost flipped over. Oh, story for you. That's the, that's the, you got to tell me that one. <laughs> Oh, man. Well, I appreciate you having. I ain't going to steal no more of your day. I know it's your off day and you got to get some rest, but I really appreciate you joining me. I'll see you. Uh, I'll see you next week. Oh, oh the Thursday? Thursday? Yeah, Thursday I'll be yeah, there. You know that guy. <laughs> yes, sir. I'll be there. We working, baby. Yes, sir. I'll be on the, I'll be on the field. That's lit. That's awesome. Yes. I appreciate yes, you so much. Thank you for having me. I appreciate you too, brother. Yes, Anytime. Sir. All love.